Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and this little lecture is on hosting on Windows Azure. I've actually done some advanced lectures on Windows Azure hosting, but this is a beginner's lecture. Let's look at what we really want to do here. Um, I'm in a project here in Visual Studio, and what I really want to be able to do here is, here's my project. I would like to be able to right-click, select Publish, and of course when I select Publish here, it gives me some information. Um, it gives me a, a dialog where I can look at things that I want to do here. Um, I have a profile, connection, settings, preview. But what I'd really like to do is have all that stuff set up and hit the button that says publish. When that's going on, um, you can see down here that it actually is doing some stuff um, to build and publish this. But what happens is over here, voila, um, nicely here comes my website and it's up and published. And I can go and I can hit the login button hit login with Google, do the login, and be up and running on my site. Actually, I've already logged in in that one, so let's go back. Um, but I, I can get an actual operational uh, website. There's my login right there that I use with my Google. And there's a sample project with three dummy buttons and some other things there that is up and running. All that nicely done um, over at Azure. So how do I get to there? Well, the first thing is let's let's just let's just go to Azure, okay? Main website for Azure, um, not the website for the site, but Azure. I'm, I'll actually I'll go to the Azure Manager, and I'm currently logged into the Azure Manager. And let's just take a quick look at this thing. So what I've done is I've created a Azure account. Um, this should not be really tremendously difficult for any of you to do. Um, you can set up a free three-month trial on Windows Azure even after the end of the three-month three trial. If you look at the pricing information and how things work, you should be able to, uh, and that's, by the way, we can, we can go look at that. That's uh, available for you, and there's also sales. And um, it, This does give you the ability to set up quite a few websites uh, with, even within their pricing model for free. Step one, that was step one, getting that account established. Step two, well, I'm working with Visual Studio 2012, but if we look over here at the Azure Downloads page, you can see that they've got downloads for multiple different uh, types of languages. And really the one that I'm interested in is .NET because I'm using .NET, and then if I hit the Visual Studio 2012, it's gonna take me directly to a download page where I will need to download and install the SDK. So that's step two download and install the windows.net SDK and get that up and running. So once you have that up and running, you are going to have a few more tools over here in Visual Studio that you'll be able to work with, but let's just go one step further than that. So now that I've got the SDK, which I've already done, I've downloaded and I've installed the SDK, I've got it operational, what do I need to do next? Well, um, I would like to be able to now manage my Azure site. So what I've got over here is some of the items that I've created up on my Azure site right here. And um, I have a storage account. I have right here, I have a website, COP4834, which is a website. And if I click on that, it's going to take me to a page that's specifically with this. And as you'll note, I have some um, it has a link to the SDK because I would need to be able to use the SDK but it also has this download the published profile well if you think about this you have to have a way for me to automatically publish from my local computer to the Windows Azure site I'm gonna need a set of credentials that says okay I, here's where I'm publishing to and here's the login and the passwords and all the things that I need to make this a reality now the, rea the first part of this is you know going over here in the menu to the left I have all items and websites. If I click on websites, I do have the ability to make more websites. If I if I want to make more, I have this uh, I don't know if you get this new button in the bottom to make a new website. I've already got one up and running. You know, I can stop the current website that's running. So I have some ability to do some things in management of this current website. But all I do is click on this, and it does take me to a basic management screen here. So um, now one of the things that it would be nice to do is to be able to deploy from a source control. Right now I'm working off my local machine and I don't have source control. 
I really would like to, and one of the things that's really fine is the ability to source control something else that would be a great cloud service. And I would like to be able to manage this out of a source control. So that's one of the things that would be a nice capability here. So as I'm working through this now, I've got this ability to download my published profile. When I do that, by the way, if I click this, it is a set file that I'm going to save. And I'm not going to save it right now because I've already done it. Now when I come over here to my right click here and I do the publish, I have this ability in my profile to go ahead and import that same file which will have the credentials. So that's very nice capability of being able to do that. And I called that COP4834. So just to understand the two steps, I downloaded the publishing profile from Azure and then imported it into this published web. Now once I've done that, I've really got all the capabilities of what I need to do here and it's relatively straightforward. I can just right I can just right click select publish and get it up there. There are some other details like one of which is that I am accessing a database and to access a database on my local machine is what I'm using my local machine when I'm publishing uh, when I'm working with Visual Studio on my local machine it's SQL Server. However when you're up on Azure, obviously Azure is not going to be accessing the database on your local machine. So you will need to have the ability to go ahead and create SQL databases. And I have created a couple of SQL databases on Azure that I have I now am using for this application. And if you know that when you do this, the one thing that is extremely important that you have to do is you must change those connection strings so that the connection strings that point to the local database when you upload to Azure actually point to the other database and I have a totally separate lecture on that. This is the basics of getting started. I really wanted to cover that those concepts of single click publishing, okay, having the site that it goes to, working with Azure is relatively straightforward. Most of the tools are there for you. Um, if you need to actually see those um, those connection strings, you can do that because uh, it's even have a starter project that you can work with. You can see the connection strings that you need to work with; they're all right there. Okay, it's simple cop, cut and copy and or copy and paste to bring them over, and relatively straightforward stuff. And the SQL database here, the dashboard that is in the SQL database, and the um, tools that come with it are relatively um, user-friendly and easy to use. So it's not so bad to be able to do this. In fact, you can, e you can easily get to a management console within here also.